Okay, you're live. So, Tangy, where are we? Uh, we're right now at the bottom of TTT pitch. It's a 40 meter pitch. Day two of the expedition. After a 24 hour drive across Europe, we crash into the local community house. I describe this as a literal hive of activity, swarming with filthy animals, crawling over each other to get to the food. We've completely occupied this small space. We've got a little stove here. Lots of food here. It's looking good. Are you excited? Just say yes. Yes. Good. Well done. <laughs> Migavets stands at 1862 meters above sea level, so we ported the food and equipment for the final kilometer of ascent along the zigzag mountain path, all the while taking in the rugged limestone landscapes of the Julian Alps. Since 2016, we've been accessing the Migavet system through one of its most scenic entrances, a 120 meter cliff abseil off the western edge of the mountain. Could there be more new entrances on that cliff side? Through careful examination of a photograph, a suitably dark alcove was spotted, which became the objective of an ambitious pushing trip. The alcove led to a promising first pitch, which we bolted down as soon as we arrived. All right, I'm uh, using the uh, pointy end of my hammer to smooth the surface. So Tangy, what have you found? Uh, we're now bolting the second pitch in Gondolin. We are bolting down a maybe seven meter deep meander. I'm going to try to reach the bottom of that and see whether it carries on with. The passages at the bottom, however, were choked with scree. Somewhat disappointed, we surveyed out. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. No, sorry, sorry. I, I, I mean, this is station three to station one. Right? So, Ben, can you describe what we found at the bottom of the large chamber? So at the bottom, um, so right at the end, as you descend, there's a little, there's a little dig which we had to dig out. It was kind of choked. So one of us, well, we all like peered our head through, and so it's all like a small phreatic tube going off. But this is probably too, too, too small for us to fit through. So do you think that's it for this cave? Um, firstly, I don't think so, because there's a, a nice boulder chunk that could do some prodding with tent poles. Other than that, I can't really think of any good leads. Okay, fair enough. So Tangy, how do you feel? This is a cave that you discovered. It seems like it's maybe almost at an end. Yes. Um... It did sound like the start of a little adventure to sort of find a cave yesterday and go pushing it today. Um, and it exceeded my expectations in so far as it did not die at the bottom of the first pitch, it was the second pitch. And at the bottom of that, a very, um, a very great sounding drop on the other side, which turned out to be the third pitch. Um, unfortunately, the cave ended just after that. Uh, a lot of uh, enthusiasm uh, and a lot of excitement for that cave. Uh, unfortunately, now died down. Do you think you'll be back here? Uh, the cave was de-rigged and surveyed during that trip. At 113 meters long and 30 meters depth overall, it could be considered a modest affair, were it, but for a breathtaking 10 meter pendulum over the Tolminka Valley. Fortunately, the hollow mountain yielded more secrets over the course of the expedition. In particular, a series of pitches eventually formed a high-level route dropping through the roof of the Hall of the Mountain King. Where are we? Thanks it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Where have we just come from? 
um, the Galleria. Yeah, what are we above? We're above Castaway. Nice. What's going on here? Uh, Jack is pressing in the bolts for white hang. Nice. Have we got ourselves a pitch? Yes. Cool. Uh, so, I practice putting in a bolt. Ready? Yep. Um, for the first time, which was quite good. On a, on a white hang. Uh, down a free climb. And, uh, there we go. And that stops the drubber getting stuck. Yep. Now, first, I've helped ferry some kit along the cool so we could drop a, a large pitch. Mm -hmm. um, and then we survey down. This! And the rocks fall! <laughs> it is traditional to gather at a panoramic spot to watch sunset every evening hoping to catch a glimpse of cavers returning across the plateau etched against a multicoloured sky. Later, many a conversation can be enjoyed around a none too warm fire. These revolve around the day's findings and the following day's plans. But while some cavers enjoy the comforts of the bivvy, others opt for an all-nighter underground. Ten years after I was, I guess, first and last here, maybe not first, but certainly last here with Rick, we have rediscovered the pitch of Smear Zero. And so Tangy's down at the relay bolt, which I guess must have been put in by Rick, but I don't think he ever descended that. So Tangy's just... At the bottom of the pitch, we found a series of small drops taking a relatively modest amount of water. Just, um, yeah, really nice, really beautiful little bit of passage, lovely. But anyway, we've stopped at this point because we got to this. So, possibly not very good footage there, but it's quite a deep, big pool. But it's not definitely not sunk because we can see the passage going on the far side. Um, but the pools are kind of scary because you don't want to get wet. So what we're going to do... So Tangy, what have we just found? We have just found the sun. After surveying and documenting the sump, we headed back to Mary's Cafe, a cache of food, first aid and equipment located halfway down the cave. So we've made it back to Mary's Cafe. So we've got a candle, music, music, got some exciting surveys of this particular area that Tangy put together. And most importantly, a stove! So just a tiny little mini tranger, burning away on some mess. And that's making some tea for us, I guess. And then after that, we'll heat up. heat up this delicious thing, which I think is couscous. Fishy couscous alatelli. Alatelli, yeah. Fine connoisseur of the food. Um, another thing that's also very useful is a logbook. So this time we just got a tiny little one, which is just one of our survey. Exploration continued for another two weeks. A lot of our effort went into the hammerhead area. A succession of pitches and horizontal passage eventually led to a collapsed chamber with boulders the size of a double-decker bus stacked up to the roof and a draft rising between them. We beat a hasty retreat from this very hostile place. Following a side passage led to a promising pitch, but time was wearing on. Hmm, might be a nas nasty pitch head, but it is relatively free of boulders. No, sure. Hammer head yes. would have to wait. After four weeks of hard toil comes the backup. Sorting equipment into crates, finishing the logbook entries or polishing the caving songs. But it is also time to find out what our novices thought about the whole expedition. Push it then, but we sort of went a few meters and sort of looked around the corner, and it, it was like big walking passage. So, yeah. all right, so you found the big walking passage, and then, uh, well, then we went back. 